your excellencies, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This evening, I bring you warm greetings from the Christian Council of Ghana and the Methodist Church, Ghana. It has pleased the Lord this year to renew our friendship and our bonds and to deepen our common purpose as his disciples. As the Catholic Bishops Conference and the Christian Council of Ghana. We give thanks and praise to God for this season and this moment. Last year we could not meet as a result of the COVID. But if we can meet like this to celebrate the goodness the faithfulness of God, then we have every cause to give him all the praise and the adoration and to thank him. We are also grateful to the Catholic Church for this warm invitation and the reception. But since morning, we have received warm uh, greetings from you. We are so grateful your excellencies and our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Tonight I have decided to look at the gospel reading as was taken from John chapter 15 verses 1 through 10. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter and number and we are as we looked at the Sunday reading, the gospel was John 15, 1 to 8. But today, I have just chosen this one to firm up what we are doing here as brothers and sisters in the Lord and as disciples of Jesus Christ. The passage as we see it is part of the last messages of our Lord and Savior to his disciples. And like a man living his will or his testament before he dies, the same way Jesus left instructions for his own, that is for you and for me. It was how to live and receive the fullness of their inheritance in God. Many times Jesus spoke in parables. In other times he used symbols. But this time round he used a common illustration that the people would understand and would not miss it. Because just as we are Sometimes we find even biblical excuses to run away from the demands of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But here, Jesus gives an illustration which was so common and not parable which they want to find meanings later. He made it so simple for them and for us as his disciples so that those of us who believe in his name can receive his blessings and bear fruit. Dear friends, Jesus, as he walked with his disciples, began to talk to them about the vine, the vine dressers, branches and fruit. The vine, vine dresser, branches and fruit. And in this passage we find that God is a vine dresser. We who are his disciples are the branches. And the branches 
bear fruit. And Jesus is seen as the true vine. The true vine. In explaining this, we will come to understand that Jesus in this illustration qualifies the vine to call it true, authentic, original, the source of all. And that is how Jesus uses it. And for Christ, for him to qualify as a true vine means that he is the type of vine that brings life. He is the vine that establishes in humanity hope, meaning, and what life is all about. As we read from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 39 and, 30 and 40, the people went out there and they found the false vine, a type of vine that was false, a type of vine that brought death to them. But here we see Jesus say, I am the true vine. The main purpose of the true vine is to give life. Just as John 10, 10 tells us. The devil comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But Christ Jesus, the true vine, came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And Christ compared himself to a vine for our benefit so we can understand who we are in him. And like the vine, he is the source of our existence as his disciples and as his people. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. Jesus was I am the true vine, referring to himself as God. Christ the true vine, source of all life. He gives life to us as individuals, to us as families, to us as his church. And he is responsible for perfecting the church, which he builds. And you and I, make up the church. It is the vine that supplies all the nutrients that the branches need to fruit. Just like the vine, Christ supplies all the nutrients of God's grace that the church and believers need to bear fruit and to manifest his glory. So he sets the agenda right that he is the true vine. Then he continues in verse 5 to say that you are the branches. You are the branches. You here referring to his disciples, referring to me and to you. We are the branches. So we are in a botany class. We are in agricultural science class, studying the tree. And he talks about the vine, the stem. Now it comes to the branches. And when we talk of the branches, we are saying of it, the branches are many. And then you can see the twigs, you can see the leaves. And they flourish all over, be it a tree or whatever. Whether crawling, they have the twists and the leaves on it. And sometimes you see it as so beautiful, so beautiful. Yet, 
they meet at one point. All of these will meet at one point. They are all in one vine. And that is where we begin to see ourselves and even for what we are going through today to come here from the Christian Council to join our Catholic friends. We have a common denominator. We have a common factor that binds us together, that brings us together because we are united in the true vine who is Christ Jesus our Lord. Though we might have various opinions, we might come from various places, near and distant, yet we meet and we meet in Christ, the center of our unity. So for you and for me, whether you are coming from Christian Council, you are coming from the Catholic, wherever, as people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we meet together in this. And sometimes we also want to look at the vine. The branches meeting in the stem are also supported by the root. And this root is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the core of the vine. The root which is not seen. It is the branches and the fruits that it bears that we see. As the disciples, we are the branches. Our life is hidden with Christ in the true vine. We all understand that it is the root that bears and carries the tree. And so diffuses the sap to it and it is all in all to it in flourishing into fruitfulness. So it is only in Christ that we can bear fruit, that we can be useful, that we can live a meaningful life as his disciples and as the church. So for us to beat, we are saying that we have an example. We have an example in this illustration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Christ who unites us. Jesus Christ, the true vine. He supplies our needs and all that will make us fruitful. Then he continues in verse 1 to talk about God. God as the vine dresser. God as the vine dresser. God is the farmer. The farmer's responsibility is to make sure that the vine will grow and grow right. And it is his responsibility to make sure that he cuts, he cleanses, and he prunes. He cuts, he cleanses, and he prunes. And he does all these to remove that which will hinder the fruitfulness of the branches. The fruitfulness of the branches. Beloved in the Lord, pruning in any agricultural setting or setup makes the tree to bear much fruit. To leave it, you might see it so blossomed, huge, but it might not bring out the desired fruit. Some may be dead, others may be impediments, and others may be crossing the way for which the tree can bear fruit. 
the same goes with you and with me as God's people and God's disciples. As Christians and as disciples of the Lord, we also undergo pruning in our life because even the best of Christians are still weak. We are frail. We are sinful. And we are always associated with sometimes the wrong people. And God, in his own grace and mercies, wanting us that the, the business of the branch is to bear fruit, takes pain to prune, to prune us. And he prunes our lives. He prunes our hearts. He prunes our attitudes and he prunes our thoughts. He prunes it of the bitterness that we have. Prunes it of the resentments that we keep and harbor. Prunes it of the selfishness that hinders our growth spiritually. He prunes it of the anger and the self-centeredness and the corruption amongst us. The arrogance and the pride. Dear Christian friends, our heavenly vine dresser is constantly removing what hinders our spiritual growth to make us effective witnesses and disciples to glorify him. Now Jesus looks at the branches. And as you look out there and see the branches, they are weak and frail. They are insufficient to stand on their own. And this is the import of Jesus' message. For the branch to bear fruit, to stay alive, and to continue, it has to do something. It has to remain. It has to be attached to the vine. Without it, it is bound to die. Without it, it is useless. Without it, it will dry and wither. And so Jesus, in this passage, four or five times says, Remain in me. Abide in me. Be attached. Have a closer life-giving relationship with me, the true vine. As the Father prunes you, that is when, as a church, we can bear fruit. God desires that we bear fruit as a church. In this nation, in our individual lives, in our families, in our relationships. He desires that the branches will bear fruit. And as a church, he expects of us here in our country, what is it that God wants us to do to glorify him? What is it that we together as his church will do to make him known out there. It is when we stay close and attached to him. To depart from him and to move away from him means that we are not useful. We are not having the life to bear the fruit. Many a times in this country where we find people detaching, even though they, we call ourselves a church, we are so distant, we are so removed from the source of the strength and the power of the church, Jesus Christ. But today, as we reflect on this passage, it is my prayer that we 
who have come to believe in him will remain in him. And Jesus says, if you are not in me, and if you move away from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. My prayer for the church in Ghana, my prayer for you as a disciple who make up the church is that you will remain in him so we can be fruitful. Says, without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. St. Augustine points out that Jesus added, you can do nothing to emphasize that fact that by ourselves, by our own effort, we cannot even produce a little good, a little good fruit. So as we go from here, bearing fruit, remaining in him, and being the branches that the Lord requires that we bear fruit, it is only in abiding, in attaching ourselves, in having that life relationship with him. That is the only way by which we will become fruitful. And when we become fruitful, it glorifies the Lord. It glorifies the Lord. My prayer is that you and I will remain in this vine, Jesus our Lord. Amen.